Good day, fellow investors. Welcome to the stock market news with a long-term fundamental twist. JP Morgan recently came out with a new markets overview, their guide to markets, which is one of the best guides to investing to what's going on with the markets, with the economy. And as every quarter, I really enjoy going through the guide. There has been a lot of new additions. And in this video, we're going to discuss the markets, the valuations, the economy, the interest rates, inflation. And then they have really added a lot of slides about Asia, China, what's going on there, how it compares with the West, and we'll always conclude with the best chart that JP Morgan shows, which is the average return the average investor has made over the last 20 years, which is just 2.5%. So if you like this channel, the educative content here, where the goal is that you don't get 2.5% annual returns, but much more with less risk, please click that like button. That's all I ask and perhaps even consider subscribing. Let's start with today's stock market news. So what's the stock market situation? We have started to see some bubbles burst. We have done the Archegos video this week, but the stock market is still going strong. If we just look at what happened for the S&P 500 over the last 10 years, it's still really, really staggering. 400% up till the COVID crash and now 78% higher than the bottom of March 2020. So over the last year, stocks have been going nothing but up. If we take a look at the NASDAQ, also rebound. There was a little dip in February, a little bit fear about tech stocks, but now we are rebounding there too and everything seems to be going up. Even the German index, the DAX, is at all-time highs after years and years of doing not much. However, if we look at the Shanghai Composite Index, there the situation is a little bit different and we'll discuss that also later. After exuberance in 2007, gambling, a lot of gambling with stocks, 2015 crashing, the market there is a little bit higher, but not that much higher and still below the 2007 highs and below the 2015 highs and at 2017 levels. So the situation in Asia is pretty different. But let's look at valuations because Valuations will determine your long-term returns. And we see now that the S&P 500 forward price earnings ratio is really, really high. We can compare it to the 1990s and the dot-com bubble that later burst. But when you compare it to the 25-year average, which is even higher than the longer-term average, then you can see how stocks are exuberantly priced at the current moment in time. Of course, this is because of interest rates. If we take a look at the interest rates with interest rates at zero and likely to be at zero for longer, meaning the next few years, then of course, when you compare zero interest rates, zero returns on your cash to the stock market, even a valuation of 22 which still implies 100 divided by 22 still implies a return of around 4%, 2 3% growth in earnings, and you are still at a great return of 5 6%. Compare that to interest rates, and stocks are ridiculously cheap. If, if, and if interest rates remain this low, if interest rates start to go higher, and we'll discuss that with inflation later then stocks might go through periods that we have already experienced in the past with huge declines. So this might revert if interest rates go up. Something very interesting about the stock market is how specific sectors rebounded. And you can see here that since the vaccines have been announced early November, you can see how the worst performing sectors, energy, airlines, REITs, hotels, banks, office REITs, residential REITs, and industrials have all exploded. And online retail that was the winner in the past 
didn't do so good since. And this all shows how the market is really momentum focused, is focused on what is the news and not really on fundamentals. And perhaps we as investors really should do the opposite. So we were doing some videos of, on energy in September when nobody wanted to touch energy. Of course, the results are good. So again, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy. Perhaps now it's time again to look the other way around. If we look at comparative performance, pre-vaccine China did really really good but after the vaccine China didn't do much. There is a little bit of turbulence there. We made a video yesterday about delisting and that might be the issue for a little bit of skepticism around China trade wars and etc. But the rest of the markets did pretty unanimously well. When you look at volatility, this year has been pretty stable. The biggest drawdown of the S&P 500 is just 4% and year to date we are up 6%, now even a little bit higher as the market reached new highs. But this is the volatility index and when it comes to volatility, you can see how volatility peaks when something happens, long-term capital management bailout, bubble burst in the 2000s, 9-11 fears, post 9-11 fears, global crisis, then we have crisis in the US, Europe, and you see how always this volatility index bursts and then it goes down, 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 and then something happens, then go down, 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 then something happens like COVID, and now it has been settling lower and lower until something will happen again. And we have to see what kind of reaction will there be here. Will it be a COVID reaction? Will it be a big crash like this? Or a long-term crash where we see negative returns for a decade like it has been the case over the 2000s. Also, if you look at the longer term charts, 30 years of nothing, New Deal again, what was this? 15, 20 years of no returns, 1970s with stagflation, also long periods of no returns. So given the current exuberance, the valuations, that is something to expect for going forward. So high valuations, of course, it all depends on interest rates and I wish I could predict interest rates, but as nobody can do that, we have to assess the risks and rewards of investing compared to what can happen and how it impacts your life. Whatever we discuss here, don't think as anything as a given. Always think, okay, how does it impact my life? Because we are all different, we have all different life preferences. So the point of this video is to put all these things into perspective towards your life. That's the only thing that matters. So if we look at historical returns, of course, five-year returns, annualized returns, when the valuations were at these levels are actually negative, so around zero. Of course, if valuations change and if interest rates go higher, then this is a certainty that returns will be zero. Can also be higher. This is about 7-8% per year, which is great returns and is what likely the S&P 500 will deliver over the long term. But you have to expect also negative returns. That's a given. The dividend growth of the S&P 500 is expected to be 37 on the dividend cuts. So the dividend there in line with inflation and growth to 3%, what you have to expect and what are the businesses delivering now can be seen through the buyback yield of 2.7%. So long-term returns 2.7%, add another 2.5, 2.7% for growth and you have total investment returns expected from the S&P 500 of around 5%. 4-5%. If valuations go up, then we go a little bit lower, but this is not predictable. However, 5% compared to zero interest rates, stocks are still a bargain and can go much, much higher. We have seen a rebound in value stocks compared to growth stocks, but now growth stocks are coming back again. And you can see here, if you are 
afraid of a recession, even if with these stimulus, etc., it will be hard to see that. But if you are afraid of recessions in the long term, this is a nice chart showing the correlation to real GDP. Of course, mostly industrials, then financials, energy, technology, healthcare, and utilities and consumer staples are the least impacted by a recession. Now, these were the markets. We'll discuss later the pockets of the markets that are a little bit more undervalued when we discuss Asia and we compare all the markets. But let's talk a little bit about the governments and the economy and use the great charts thanks to JP Morgan. If we look at GDP growth, this is for the United States, but I expect similarly for Europe and the rest of the developed world. World, and we can see here that growth in working age population is very very low productivity growth is around 1% growth in workers should be 0.7% so we have long-term drivers of GDP growth at around 1.8% not bad but not even great and then this is perhaps the key here if we look at the 2021 federal budget borrowing it will be 50 percent of the budget so 50 percent deficit for this year for the us similarly also globally this is really really okay necessary for the current situation however if i look at the expectations from congress budget office they see deficits of three four five percent over year over year compared to GDP, okay, 5.7% then growing in 2031. So if there are big deficits going forward, then the debt to GDP should grow. But their expectation here is for stable debt to GDP with 4 5% budget deficits, okay, perhaps inflation and nominal GDP growth will cover for this. But I think that in the next 10 years, we will have a recession. So I don't agree with these projections. A little bit too stable, a little bit too exuberant, a little bit too linear. I would expect much more volatility. And I would expect a lot of volatility in these developed markets if we have inflation and interest rates have to be increased higher. Because now everybody's happy print as much as you will because inflation is low, interest rates are at zero, nobody complains, there are no market forces that prevent that. But if that changes, and we are long-term investors, we always keep an eye on what can change. If that changes, that might have a big impact down the road on volatility, on investments, on returns, on whatever. Now everything looks so stable, which is, something to okay oh good all happy nothing to complain but always keep in mind that things can and will likely change if we take a look at inflation over the last 20 years globalization lower cost production technology developments all those impacted inflation high liquidity that allowed for a lot of investments high competition and we have seen inflation lower lower and lower and really below even the target rates of 2%. This allows for monetary policy 1, zero interest rates, monetary policy 2, printing of money, and now even monetary policy 3, zero interest rates, money printing, and giving money directly to people to consume and spend. And cheap money leads to higher and higher debt levels. If you look at the gray, the government debt le level of the US, also Europe, household debt levels and non-financial corporate debt levels, everything has exploded on the upside. So we are living in a debt-fueled world and Ray Dalio has warned us that this is the long-term debt cycle that will eventually revert. He doesn't know the timing, nobody knows, but this basing consumption on debt, borrowing like there is no tomorrow, we have seen the budget deficits, this will at some point end because it can't go on forever. And it can end if the Fed is forced to intervene and if inflation goes above 2%, 2.4%, 4, 5, 6%, if they lose control of on inflation, then things might change. We have seen a rebound in inflation now at 2.2%, but still 
they will let it go higher so that's a guarantee that cash is trash we have discussed that and cash is trash as it is forecasted that the fed will print money european central bank will print money bank of england and bank of japan everybody will be printing money nobody is predicting any rate hikes in 2021 so with so much supply of money one guarantee that i can give you is that cash will be worth less and less and those that take that are smart low interest rates less value of cash and you can see this debt pile ballooning globally thanks to the environment those that hold this debt which are usually your pension funds will be the suckers in the coming 10 years that's another given on inflation i like to show these kinds not the measured inflation but the real inflation if we look at the new york all transaction how price house price index it was 75 45 years ago now it's 750 so over 45 years 10 times increase this for me is inflation and that's something you can expect also going forward of course depending on the demand for the real estate but inflation there is and those who are interested in what will be the returns depending on the inflation environment this is high inflation and rising inflation equity does best reads to commodities gold a little bit less bonds less great but okay avoid bonds today low inflation and rising inflation again emerging market equity equities in general low and falling inflation emerging market equity does bad here and we have seen what is going on with the market and over the last what is this 30 years 32 years this is what happened most times so low inflation and then even falling inflation this is the environment we have been living in and equities have done really really well except emerging market equities all other periods also with high in inflation and falling inflation also emerging market equities have done well but on inflation you can have a global perspective or you can have a country perspective and you can see here how these inflation rates change all over the place europe had a little bit of inflation in the early 2010s then no inflation brazil russia mexico had more issues with there so there will always be pockets of inflation global and now when it comes to investing with all the money printing with all the budget deficits with low interest rates with things that might change it's good to look at the developed markets us data but you can apply the data to europe equally and international markets this is another beautiful chart from jp morgan look at the relative performance of the rest of the world and united states over the last 13.3 years the s p 500 did extremely well before that it was the world that did well before that 1990s of course s p 500 us stocks nasdaq other world then again us huge outperformance by the rest of the world in the 80s as the rest of the world boomed and you have this constant exchanges in trends who does better and as capital flows where things are good these momentum trends can really really last long but these things might change and given what's going on in the economy i would think that i would like to be diversified or prepared for when this happens also because as people leave this they go to something else and if we look at my table of publicly analyzed stocks then you can download for free in the link in the description below i have recently analyzed also alibaba and you can see how my intrinsic value for a 10 percent return compared to the market cap shows that alibaba is really really cheap compared to amazon that is overvalued so if people go and look elsewhere for value we might see really really a outperformance of let's say the rest of the world 
compared to US stocks. Also, if we look at valuations, you can see here international price to earnings discount versus the United States. We are now at 25%, so all the money is going to US stocks. The dividend yield is also much higher abroad from the United States. And if we look at global valuations, United States, we have the highest level of 22.1, then Japan, Europe lower, China, and emerging markets are much, much lower. And we can see here that the rest of the world did not perform not even close to emerging market Asia tech and European luxury goods, especially after COVID and the S&P 500 or US markets. So as the message was from Ray Dalio, from Jeremy Grantham that I made videos on, so you can check also the links to all the videos that I mentioned in the description below. Also the link for downloading this template with all the links to specific research. There is a lot of stocks. I'll be updating this template as I search stocks tomorrow, another Chinese interesting stock to buy. So tune in tomorrow too and you will see how what fits your portfolio what is priced in what isn't and let's now talk about asia and china from jp morgan's charts global gdp growth do you remember we discussed the us around two percent hopefully globally things look much much better big rebound and then long term it will likely still be around three you have this economic activity. It was really bad in France, Italy, Spain during the 2000, early 2010s. Then it was bad in Brazil, bad in Russia. So you can always look for these pockets of value globally. Things will be volatile for sure. However, if you look at this, the emergence of the emerging market middle class over the next 10 years from 2020 to 2030, 1.5 billion people will be added to the middle class. 883 million from India, another 453 from China, and another 133 from the rest of Asia. So if you can be exposed to this and also avoid the government, the debt issues, the deficits from developed markets, you might really enjoy something like this for your portfolio. And this is perhaps the best message from JP Morgan's new slides that I wanted to really cover here. Of course, China has also fiscal deficits, but with six, five, six, seven percent growth, this is much easier to manage. So Asia will be looking into Asian stocks, but also value stocks in the United States. It's not that exuberant as JP Morgan or others might show because there are still pockets of value also there. So I'm looking a little bit everywhere. You'll see also on my list constantly comparing to find the best investments out there. But investing is not about stocks, it's also about having the right mindset. And there are also some beautiful charts from JP Morgan to help us there. So when it comes to investing, if you look at the annual stock returns for stocks, always expect, yes, it can be great in a year, but it can really be bad. You can see a downturn of 40% easily. Bonds a little bit less on a downturn and a 50-50 portfolio, of course, bonds mitigate those downturns but then you also have to see real and nominal returns at current interest rates bonds are definitely toxic so stocks are better but keep in mind you have to expect this however on a five-year rolling return negative of stocks is really really lower or it has been over the last 70 years since 1950 so Yes, by holding businesses, you are exposed to the positives out there, which is very, very important to understand when it comes to investing. Yes, you can have negative yearly returns of 1% over the next 10 years, but longer term, this is investing and accumulating wealth is the way to go. Because, and this is perhaps the best chart from JP Morgan, the average investor Despite the fact that the S&P 500 did great over the last 20 years, the average investor did a third of that, 2.5% average returns. And that's something you have to avoid. 
How to avoid that? Simply buy fundamentals, be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy because yes, stocks are going to the moon and everything, but when the, those stocks are already at the moon, well, you know that gravity works and might push them back down. So don't be a loser like the average investor usually is. Think of fundamentals and think long term and think what best works for you so that when things change, you don't panic. And of course, currently with the low interest rates out there, there is a lot of risks. What if this change, then there might be a lot of money reshuffling, etc. So maybe better just to go to Charlie Munger tips, avoid doing stupid things. Invest in things you know, things with a margin of safety, with some value that will be there no matter what and you will do okay. Especially if you're focusing in the only thing we can do and that's accumulating wealth no matter the inflation, no matter deficits, no matter whatever, we just accumulate slowly and steadily over the years and you'll end up well off. That's it about investing. Thank you for watching. I think that this JP Morgan presentation really summarizes how investors and those who focus on accumulating wealth over the long term do really well or have the opportunity to do really well no matter the environment. So thank you for watching. Click that like button if you haven't and I'll see you tomorrow with a new Chinese stock.